Welcome back to the VA Jeeps channel. Let's grab 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ Overland Project LSX WJ. Uh, today we are continuing where we left off last time. Working on getting the frame cut out here. Well, frame is cut out. We're going to be working on getting that cleaned up, getting some metal welded in there and then figure out some placement of some motor mounts. And probably gonna be taking this rough country front end and cross member off and installing the Clayton one so we can send the rough country set up down the road and move forward. We're gonna have to make a trans mount. Gotta figure that all out. Uh, we also gotta work on making a bracket for the shifter uh, for the transfer case mainly. Still on the fence, I really wanna use the stock WJ shifters. I uh, make those work, have the interior all stockish, but going with the aftermarket shifters specifically designed for it will make a life a lot easier, but that's also more parts to purchase and so on. So we'll see what happens, but that is something that's got to be figured out before the motor and trans go in. And on this unit, motor and trans do go in together. Uh, albeit if we put in the Clayton cross member and front end, and we got a little bit different options there at that point. But we'll uh, have to cut out some pieces of metal. Got to get this all filled in like we talked about. Once we get that all filled in, uh, I've got a lot of cleaning up to do on this ugliness here. I just half-assed chopped that off with the lightning scissors. Same thing with here. I ground this down just a little bit. And like we talked about in the previous episode, uh, this is where our motor mount was previously. Something like this. And we've got a lot of room. We're going to move her back. Uh, yeah, it's probably about a good two inches or so there. So we're going to move that back so we have some more room in the front and centralize the weight, get everything moved back as far as possible. That's usually the ideal setup on any kind of vehicle is to have the drivetrain as centralized as you can get it. So that's what we're going to work on. Uh, one big thing, as we've talked about on the WJs, when you put the LS in, is the position of the engine has a lot to do with the relationship of the track bar and the front of the oil pan. So that's something we want to avoid, even though where we had it is just fine. Uh, and we've had the axles, wheels tugged up in the wheel wells both ways. There's never any form of contact or anything like that, but if we can get it further back, hey, that much the better. So we got a lot of work to do. I'm gonna get these all cut out, get these welded in, and then we're gonna go from there. That's priority number one. All right, we got that first piece cut out. Nothing's cleaned up or anything like that. No point in doing all that until we get everything fit together. But there's piece number one. We'll get that welded into place. Then we're gonna have to work on making a big piece for in here. We're gonna have a couple back pieces we gotta do, just kind of like what we did over here on this side. Get those all welded up and fit in and together and uh, keep moving along here. So here's the motor sitting in there. It's just floating for now. Got to get a different uh, way to suspend the motor. Uh, I do have a plate. I was just up at work to grab it, grabbed everything else but that. So then we can have a little more clearance with the cherry picker. About to hit the hood here. And unfortunately, at the engine leveler there, I scratched the crap out of the upper part of the cowl there. So I'm not very pleased with that. But that's also interfering with uh, setting the height of the engine but here's the biggest thing to look at we have 
boatloads of clearance for these manifolds. Uh, keep in mind now, like we talked about in the previous episode, the lower flange portions or lower outlets or whatever you want to call them are not welded onto the manifolds yet. So we got to get to that point still. Uh, you'll see right here too, tons and tons and tons of room. That was an issue. I probably didn't have to cut the flanges off these manifolds now that I know that, but I cut the flanges off to try to fit them before we cut the frame rails up. I'm very well aware and been asked about what kind of strength we're gonna have there after cutting out that much. Keep in mind that, eh, you can't see it very well on this side, it's pretty dark, but as you know, we did weld in these chassis plates. So we've got as much thickness on this side as we are on the outside of the frame rails as we can. Uh, and I did use quarter inch steel. Some of this here from before is three eighths, uh, which is, you know, a little bit much. But uh, everything is gonna fit really damn good. Uh, the other thing that we're at here is we're almost two inches further back with the motor and trans. So that's always the best ideal is to have it back as far as possible, especially for something like this. So there's our progress. Uh, I gotta get the motor pulled back out here, put it on the stand, change the lift point all around there so we can get a little more room in there. And I got to get everything level, measured and whatnot, and then we're going to get the motor mounts welded onto the chassis, and we can sit the motor in there. Uh, motor and tranny are better off to go in there together. Uh, that's definitely the way I'm doing it, with or without the Clayton front end set up on it or not. doesn't matter. I uh, just found it way easier to put the motor, trans, flywheel, everything all together at once, and then slip it all in there together. So we're going to be doing that here real soon. Uh, very pleased. I'd like to have the motor sitting in here by the end of today. Can't guarantee I'll get to that point. Uh, a little cutting and fitting and cutting and fitting and so on ends up taking up a, quite a bit of time. Uh, also, I got to make sure everything's square, straight, and level. Uh, it's kind of hard to do a little bit without the motor sitting on the springs because then the, you know, the front of the vehicle is sitting up a lot higher than it normally will be. Uh, some degree we can alter the pitch of the engine uh, with the trans mount. There's plenty of room up inside there, so I'm not worried about any of that. Any of you guys that are thinking about this, the 545 that comes in the V8 Grand Cherokees is physically the same size and about the same weight as uh, 4L80. Uh, a lot of you guys are using a 4L60s smaller, but there's plenty of room in that tunnel. Uh, on the transfer case side up in the bottom, I did end up pushing it up a little bit with the air hammer and a BFH. And really there wasn't that much, it wasn't that tight anyways. But take another peek. Here's where we are at the moment. Uh, we'll get the rest of this going. Gonna get these welded in and move on to the next step. It's getting pretty exciting. I'm very happy to have this. The exhaust clearance end of things was been a headache from the first time had it apart, put it back together, cut it up, chopped it up, changed it a few times now. Uh, just trying to do as little as possible and remove as little as possible. But at this point, we got to make freaking room, get it to work. So we'll be back and start moving on the next part.